Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day for another sublimation tutorial. Today we'll learn how to add sublimation designs to wood, like this. I've tested lots of techniques and tools to get crisp, colorful results for projects like these adorable gnome signs. I'll share my best advice, including what not to do when sublimating on wood. So let's head on over to the craft table and we'll get started. Like many of you, I've been really into sublimation lately. I've tried it on so many surfaces with lots of different techniques. Sometimes it takes a little experimentation and a redo or two, let's be honest, but usually we can get beautiful results. Sublimating on wood has been a bit more of a challenge, I will admit. Between the textured surface, color variations, and surprisingly high moisture content, Wood required some extra focus, but look at the results. It's totally worth it. And now I can show you how to sublimate on wood with confidence. First, let's talk supplies. I'll show you the different materials I tried, but you can pick the one that works best for you after you see the results. I used these simple 10 inch uncoated wood rounds in my testing. You can use a different size or shape, of course. Just make sure to adjust your design to fit before printing. I'll show you how to prepare them for hanging too. I also tried my designs on a blank door hanger made just for sublimation so we can compare the two. So this is just wood and this has a sublimation coating. There are lots of materials to make surfaces work with sublimation dye on the market. For this project, I tried clear dye sublimation HTV, laminating pouches, just like this, a polycrylic top coat, and a few that just didn't work out so well. I'll show you those later. Now, like I said, the wood's color can impact the design. So I also tested painting them with a latex paint in a tray with a foam roller. And I'll show you a trick with press and seal film to help during cleanup. I printed my designs using my Epson EcoTank that I converted for sublimation ink using Hippo sublimation ink. And I printed them all on the same A sub 125 gram sublimation paper that is my favorite. When we get to the actual sublimating, most techniques will need scissors, a pencil and ruler, lint roller, some heat resistant tape, and of course a heat press. You can use a Cricut Easy Press or a Cricut Auto Press or a traditional clamshell press would also work. We'll also want some white uncoated butcher paper and cardstock to protect the machine from any ink. We'll also want a self healing mat and a craft knife for some of the materials. The polycrylic method will also require a paintbrush, a two-sided sponge, and a bowl of water. And since we're sublimating, there will be some fumes during the heating process, so please work in a well-ventilated area or set a fan out so that you have air circulation. And don't get too close to the designs until they've cooled off and the chemicals dissipate. Now let's go through the sublimation of wood process from start to finish. I'll show you how to customize one of my free gnome designs using free Google software. You can find the gnomes in my free resource library. Then we'll get to the testing. Step one, get or prepare a sublimation design. If you already have a sublimation print ready to go, you can skip to step two to learn how to put it onto wood. But for those who are newer to sublimation and need some help with the sublimation print, let's talk about that first. Sublimation printing requires high quality design files for the best results. You can use my cute gnome designs to get started and practice. They're PNG files and perfect for these signs. Each has a version with a saying and a blank version you can customize. The four seasons of gnomes, the winter gnome, the spring gnome, the summer gnome, and the fall gnome. To find these files, go to jennifermaker.com 455 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or enter the library. You can find the designs by searching for design number 455 and then click it to download the zip file. There are lots of ways to work with sublimation designs, 
but today we'll use Google Docs to personalize the blank group design and then print it. To get a free Google account, visit google.com slash docs slash about. First, we need to measure the blank so we print the design at the right size. I'll use a plain wood blank. Always double check your item's dimensions. Mine is 10 inches at the widest and tallest points. Now we can customize it the right size. On your desktop or laptop computer, go to Google Docs in the Google Chrome web browser. Click blank to open a new document. Click file and select page setup. Set your margins to zero and change your paper size to match your sublimation paper. Mine is eight and a half by 11 inches. I'll leave it in portrait orientation. Under the insert menu, select image and upload from computer. Navigate to your file, it's probably in your downloads folder and click open. To resize it to fit your blank, right click on the picture and select image options. Make sure the lock aspect ratio box is checked and change the width or height field. I set my image width to eight and a half so there's still room for some text below. If you're using a single gnome image, 4.24 inches wide by 9 inches tall works well. The gnome goes off the edge, but it's a great effect for the sign and fills the space nicely with text to the side. Select the image and then click on the second icon from the left in the menu below it, which means wrap text. Now you can move the image anywhere on your page. I centered mine so it won't get cut off at the curved edges. If you want to personalize your design with text, go to the Insert menu, select Drawing and New. In the Drawing dialog box that appears, click the text box icon near the top, the square with a T in it. Click, drag, and release in the drawing area to create a text box. Type in your phrase, I'll add Welcome Gnome, <laughs> then select it so you can change the font and size. In the toolbar, look for the font box. It probably says Arial right now. You can use any of the typefaces listed or select more fonts to browse Google's free collection. They're all free to use. I'll search for Luckiest Guy, which is similar to the font in the other designs. That font, by the way, is called Wonderful Display. Use the font size menu to increase the size. A font size of 50 works well for my phrase and script, but you may want yours bigger or smaller. Click save and close. Now just click on your new text and choose the fifth icon from the left, wrap text in front of text from the bottom menu. Now you can place the text anywhere on your page too. I centered mine by eye below the image. If you need to change anything about your text, click Edit in the menu below it. When your design is ready, follow the steps for my printing sublimation designs with Google Docs at jennifermaker.com slash print sublimation designs from Google Docs. Remember to mirror the design so it will read correctly once you transfer it to. If you have a blank larger than mine, Follow the print and tiling instructions in my How to Sublimate Large Designs tutorial at jennifermaker.com 442. Step two, prepare your wood blank. For the wood signs, the most important step is preheating. Leaving any moisture can really mess you up, so don't skip this step. Turn on your heat press and set the temperature to 380 degrees Fahrenheit and the time to 50 seconds. Place a clean piece of white cardstock on the pressing area and put the wood blank on top of it. Add a clean sheet of white butcher paper on top and press when the machine comes to temperature. If you notice what looks like smoke coming out of your press, don't worry. Nothing is burning. That's actually steam. Plain wood works, but painting the blank white kept the sublimation colors and limited the warping of the wood, which we'll talk about later. So paint is worth it. Now protect your work surface with butcher paper. For easy cleanup, place a large piece of press and seal food wrap on the bottom of your paint tray and adhere it to the sides. It will peel right up and take the excess paint with it later. 
pour a bit of white latex paint into your paint tray. Using a foam roller, spread the paint evenly on the front of your wood blank. Mine took about an hour to dry once I'd painted it, so be sure to let it dry. Step three, sublimate your designs. First, since sublimation creates fumes, open a window and turn on a gentle fan to improve your ventilation. Now let's try each of the sublimation methods you can use for wood. First, lamination pouches. Set your heat press to 375 degrees Fahrenheit and a time to 15 seconds. Open the laminate pouch and cut one side large enough to cover the entire circle. Place a clean piece of white cardstock on the pressing area. Put your dry painted wood blank on top face up. Then place the laminate sheet dull side down on top. The laminate can go over the edges of the sign, but make sure it doesn't exceed the size of the cardstock. Cover everything with a clean sheet of butcher paper and press for 15 seconds. When the time is up, remove the butcher paper and the blank. The laminate might stick to the cardstock, just gently peel away the paper. Place the blank face down on a self-healing mat and trim away any excess laminate with a craft knife. Now we're ready to sublimate it. Set your press to 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 90 seconds. Then feather the edges of the transfer by gently ripping around the design's edges. This will help smooth the transition because the cut edge of the sublimation paper can actually indent the laminated surface. Note the center of the design on the back with a little pencil mark. Place your print face down on the prepared blank. Then use a ruler to find the center of the sign and roughly line up the pencil mark. Secure the print with heat transfer tape to the blank and put it face up back on the cardstock in the press. Cover everything with a clean sheet of butcher paper and press the design. When the time is up, remove the butcher paper and let the design cool before removing the tape and paper. It's still sublimating if it's really hot. And there we go. Clear Dye Sublimatable HTV. Use Clear Dye Sublimatable HTV for a less shiny matte look than the laminating pouch. And since it's thin, you don't need to feather the edges. Set your press to 320 degrees Fahrenheit and your time to 20 seconds. Cut a piece of the HTV a little larger than the wood blank. Lint roll the wood blank to remove debris. Place a clean piece of white cardstock on the pressing area. Put your dry painted wood blank on top face up followed by the clear dye sublimatable HTV. Be sure you put it dull side down like this. Don't let the vinyl exceed the size of your cardstock. Again, it's okay if it goes over the edges of the sign. Cover everything with a clean sheet of butcher paper and press for 20 seconds. When the time is done, carefully remove the butcher paper and blank. The vinyl might stick to the cardstock. Just gently peel away the paper. Let the wood cool completely, about 5 to 10 minutes. Then trim away the excess vinyl. Peeling the carrier from the vinyl can be tricky. Gently pry it from the edge of the wood blank with your fingernail or the craft knife. The vinyl might lift, but just hold it down with your thumb and carefully remove the rest of the backing. It will be more secure after the next round of heat. Set your heat press to 380 degrees Fahrenheit and the time to 50 seconds. Place a clean sheet of the white cardstock on your press and put the wood blank on top face up. Place your print face down on the prepared blank. This time, don't feather or trim the design, just let the edges of the paper hang over. Mark the center to align it like before. Secure your print with heat resistant tape. It really sticks to vinyl, so attach the tape on the cardstock instead and press at 380 degrees Fahrenheit for 50 seconds. When the time is up, let it cool before trying to remove the paper and tape. If the paper sticks, use a damp sponge to clean off anything that's stuck on there. Polycrylic coating. 
Lint roll the blank again so no debris gets stuck in the clear coat. Then use a paintbrush instead of a roller to get a smooth surface with the liquid. Let it dry completely at least an hour. The surface should be dry to the touch and not sticky. One coat was enough for me. Set your press to 375 degrees Fahrenheit and the time to 90 seconds. Use the same steps as the HTV to secure and sublimate the design. When the time is up, let it cool to avoid ghosting and remove it from the press. Paper tends to stick to the polycrylic, but dampening the surface helps. Most of the paper came up with the soft side of my sponge. If some paper is stubborn, use the scrubber side, but gently. Sublimation Blank If you want to skip all the preparation steps, you can purchase sublimation blanks just like the signs. Set your press to 365 degrees Fahrenheit and a time to 90 seconds. Make sure to peel the protective plastic off both sides of the blank before you put it in the press. Then preheat it for 10 seconds. Prepare and center the design face down on the blank just like the others. The design doesn't need to be feathered, but remember to tape it into place well. Protect the machine with cardstock and butcher paper and then press it. When the time is up, you can remove the butcher paper. Let it cool before removing the tape and paper. Step four, add hangers. Hanging these signs is easy. For the wood rounds, I added a picture hanger to the back. Looking at the front, note the top center and place a piece of tape over the edge to mark both sides. Now the hanger will be centered and not lopsided. On the back, Measure three inches down from the top edge's center and mark with a pencil. Peel off the backer from the hanger's adhesive and place the bottom on the three inch mark. Remove the tape, make sure it's stuck to the wood and gently bend the top tab back just a bit. The sublimation blank comes with a nice rope hanger. Tie a small knot in one end and thread the other end through a hole from the back. Then put it through the other hole from the front and tie another knot in the back and you are all done. I love how all the signs came out, but there are some differences between them. I'm sure you can see them. For the wood blanks, I encourage you to paint them first. You can sublimate on the natural unpainted surface, yes, but you lose a lot of detail. The color is muted and they can warp. Painting them white first helps with all of that. If your heart is set on an unpainted look, try for a thicker wood blank to prevent warping. Now about the warping. If your wood blank warps, use a sponge and water to dampen the unfinished side. Set the sign on a couple of sheets of butcher paper and place some heavy books on top and leave it overnight and the sign should straighten a bit, but it's really worth using a thicker blank instead if this is a problem. Now, let's see how everything did. This is the one that we made with a spray subly glaze on the wood rounds. There are a few extra steps like curing the blank in an oven that you're not using for food. The smell was really bad and the end result was unimpressive compared to the other methods. I just don't think it's worth the effort, just so you know. This here is the wood with polycrylic. The polycrylic works well enough, but there is a lot of extra work trying to get the paper off the wood. Next up with the wood is the clear dye sub HTV. I like this method because of the matte finish. It's not as shiny as the other two. And here is the wood with a lamination pouch on it. It's easy to prepare and the colors are really vivid. But overall, the clear winner is the sublimation wood blank. The colors were crisp and it's the fastest way to make a cute sign. Sometimes using a product specifically made for a technique is the best option, but it does look different from the real wood. So the best option really depends on your ultimate goal. Overall, I'm thrilled with what we've learned and I can't wait to see the wood projects you'll decorate with your sublimation designs. If you need any help getting set up for sublimation, definitely check out my sublimation startup mini course at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation startup.
I walk you through choosing and setting up your printer with the right ink, show you in more detail all of the tools that you can use and the variety of things you can supplement onto, and then I show you how to use software to print and press beautiful sublimation projects. You can sign up right now and learn at your own pace over at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation startup. Now, if you have any questions about sublimating on wood that didn't get answered here or anything else craft related that you think I can help you with, please let me know. Just leave your question below this video or ask over in our sublimation group at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation group. I love to help and see you succeed. And that's it for today. Until tomorrow, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.